around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Saddled up and out front, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. I should be back late Wednesday or early Thursday. Well, don't you worry about nothing. I think it should be pretty quiet with the prisoner gone. Might even have time to do a little housekeeping around here for a change. Well, now, I swept this place out from front to back just yesterday. I know. Now, maybe you ought to use that mop and bucket standing out back before Washington declares them surplus equipment. Now, huh? Mr. Dillon. Never mind, Chester. All right, come on, Skaglo. we got to get started. I ain't no hurry. Maybe you're not, but I am. I promised the sheriff in Haves City I'd have you there by noon tomorrow. All right, let's go. Mount up. Ain't you going to take the cuts off? Uh Uh-huh. At noon tomorrow, and I get up in that saddle. Uh, and Chester... Yes, sir? Don't take things too easy, huh? Oh, yes, sir. No, sir, I won't. All right. uh, Bye, Mr. John. Was that the marshal just rode off? Uh, yes, it was. Oh, what time will he be back? What time? <laughs> well, if you'd ask me what day, it'd be a better question. This is serious, young man. Uh, <clears throat> how long will the marshal be out of town? Well, I expect him back of a Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, I'll probably be dead by then. Dead? Uh, look, Mr. I'm Mr. Jones' assistant, and if you're in trouble... In Are you good to... with a gun? Well, sure. Oh, I may not be as good as Mr. Dillon, but I do all right. I sure feel better telling all this to the marshal. Oh, what? You ain't told me nothing yet. I have to trust you. Uh, uh, can we talk inside? Well, of course. You can come on in. Oh, what's this about? Here's my card. Uh, Professor Albert Cramston. Doctor of MTA Metallurgical Research. Oh. Well, that sounds pretty important, but it don't sound very dangerous. Well, believe me, son, it is dangerous if the syndicate has put a price on your head. Syndicate? The silver syndicate in San Francisco. You know, all those millionaire fellows who own the mines. You owe them fellows. Well, uh, why should they want you dead? I don't want to tell you too much because it'd be dangerous information for you to have, but well, I will tell you this. They've hired eight killers to track me down, and the one who catches up with me gets $10,000 for the job. Well, uh, is any of them eight men in Dodge now? I don't know. I don't know who they are or what they look like. I just know they mean to get me. Well, there ain't anything I can do, Professor. Thank you, son. And I just want to say, keep your gun close by, because the welfare of your country and mine may be resting in your hands. Delmar, Wilbert. Somehow I never thought I'd see you two drinking at the same table. <laughs> Sit down, Miss Kitty. Sure. Join us for a farewell drink. I'd love to. But only if you'll let the long branch stand this round. Oh, Sam, yeah. two whiskeys, one beer. Right away, Miss Kitty. I understand Mr. Durgan bought out your shop, Wilbert. That's right, for $1,500. And you're leaving Dodge in the morning? You're right again for San Francisco. And to be perfectly honest about it, the only thing I'll miss is dropping in here to the Long Branch. Uh, here's your drinks, Miss Kitty. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Miss Kitty. Hmm? See that little old fellow by the bar there? The stovepipe hat? The kind of fussy-looking little man? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
What about him? He keeps borrowing dimes from the customers. Sam, you know we don't allow panhandling in here. Oh, but he pays them back. What? Yeah, three times now I've seen him. He borrows a dime, he leaves, comes back, buys a drink with a silver dollar, takes his chains, and pays back the dime. <laughs> well, you worry about it, Sam. I'm going upstairs for a while. I've got some bills to go over. Excuse me, boy. Sure, Miss oh. Kitty, sure. And if I don't see you before you leave, Wilbert, good luck. Well, thank you, Miss Kitty. Did you hear what Sam said about that little fella? Yeah. Sure sounds crazy. Why would anybody do that? I think we're going to find out. Oh, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I I wonder if either of you would be so kind as to lend me a ten-cent piece. Why, I think that could be arranged, don't you, Wilbert? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Here you are. Oh, uh, thank you. I'll return it shortly. I wonder where that little geezer's going. I don't know. Well, Sam said he keeps coming back with a silver dollar. Maybe we ought to follow him. Maybe we ought to. Janet, I'm worried. About the church supper, Mother? I promised I'd make the chicken pies, but the way I felt lately with headache and muscular aches and pains, I don't feel up to it. I don't wonder with that discomfort. Better do something about it. But what? Try Doan's Pills. Good advice. That's Doan's Pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. Is that him? Yeah. Now, let's don't follow too close. Wait. Where's he going? Well, he's going in my shop. Your shop? Need it locked? Well, what for? There's nothing in there. I hauled every last speck over to your place. My own stuff's already in my wagon. Well, what do you suppose he's doing in there? Well, I'll go in and ask him. No, no, wait. Let's sneak up on him. We might find out something. I didn't board up the side window between the buildings. Maybe we can see him through there. Got a lantern. Suppose he's planning to sleep in there? I don't know. What's that thing on the back counter? I didn't leave nothing like that. Take your cover off. Looks like some kind of machine. There's something crooked here, and we're going to get us a reward. Let's get the front door grabbed when it comes out. Yeah, you get on that side, and I'll stay here, and we'll wait for him to come out. That's Chester. We got to get rid of him. Why? Because if he's in on it, there won't be no reward. Oh, oh, you know what? That dergoman got me. Chester? Yep, Chester. Just taking a last look at the old shop. Oh yeah, that's right. You're leaving town tomorrow. Well, I sure do wish you luck, Wilbert. Thanks, Chester. Well, Chester, I suppose you have to get on with your rounds, being a peace officer and all. Oh, things is kindly quiet tonight, so mostly what I'm doing is getting me a little exercise before I go to bed. <laughs> well, good night, Chester. Uh, uh, good night. Good night, Chester. When we grab this fella, try to cover his mouth so he can't yell. He's coming. Get ready. <laughs> Hold him, Gatsby. Hold him. I got him. Get him back into the shop. All right. Delmer! Wilbur! You fellas in there? Are you all right? We, we got 
got him, Chester. Come on in. You got to. And we get the reward. Here, that's Professor Cramson. Let him go, Wilbur. Don't you do it, Wilbur, till he agrees about the reward. If there's a reward, you can have it. Let him go. His face is turning blue. You said you'd protect me. Now, you shoot him. You shoot him. Whose side are you on, Chester? Now, now, now look, Professor, these two fellas ain't killers. And they ain't from that syndicate thing. They're just Mr. Durgum and Mr. Gatsby. Oh, well, that's certainly a relief. Well, what, what about him? Who's he? Professor Albert Cramson, gentleman, late of San Francisco. Oh, <laughs> Pleased to make your acquaintance. Howdy. Howdy. We were watching through the window there. Well, you sure looked suspicious to us. Oh, well, I can certainly understand that. And since you've stumbled onto a part of my secret, I guess you're entitled to know the rest if you want to. Well, I sure do. Me too. <laughs> I'm kind of curious about this myself. Uh, but first, I have to ask you, are all of you natural-born citizens of the USA? Well, of course. Yeah, and sure. none of you are in the employ of a foreign government? You mean like Europe or France or one of them towns? That's what I mean. What now, that's silly. Well, know. I won't even have nothing to do with Furner. Me neither. Well, I've got to ask those questions. And one more. If the good of our duly constituted government depended on your keeping a secret, would you die instead of revealing it? Sure. Yeah, uh, of course. All right. Now, I want you to watch this carefully, gentlemen, so you'll be convinced in your own minds of the importance of this little device. I'll explain it to you step by step as I go along, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate. You just speak right up. Well, man, this is also mysterious. Like, uh, what does that thing do? <laughs> you won't believe your eyes, Mister Proudfoot. Uh, uh, would one of you contribute a dime to this demonstration? I got one. I, I got one. Right. Mine. I, I got a dime here. Somewhere. I'll take all three of them, and then uh, you each have a permanent memento, a reminder that you were among the first to witness the results of my discovery. I'll use your dime first, Mr. Proudfoot. Uh, Chester. Oh, all right, Chester. <laughs> now, put the dime in this funnel here at the top. Now, you count to three, slowly. Uh, uh, one. Uh, two. Three. Fine, fine. Now, I give the crank four complete turns. Turn this little spigot to admit three drops of mercury. That's quicksilver. And turn the crank one more time. And there we are. Now, you see that lever there, Chester, on the bottom toward the front? Uh, yes, sir. W what am I? Oh, reach over and pull it. Well, now, I ain't oh, sure. Oh, no, 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 we won't let you. Just pull it. Do it. Well, I know, but... No. Oh. Well, I don't oh. care. That's a silver dollar. It sure I is. told you, you wouldn't believe it. You can take that cartwheel to the bank tomorrow, and they'll tell you it's real. Oh, it's real enough, but I... But uh, how is it done? Oh, it's really very simple, once you understand the physical principle. It has to do with what I call induced porosity. Uh -huh. Once you make that dime porous, uh, like a sponge, all you have to do is introduce a little quicksilver to fill in the holes, and the chemical process of expansion is automatic. Well, that's clear enough. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, but, but, but why do you have to use dime? I'm glad you asked that question. You see, the ratio of the weight of one dime to three drops of mercury produces an expansion of exactly ten. Well... You follow me? That means this particular formula in this machine extends silver in size and weight in multiples of ten. Oh. Oh. So, the logical raw material is the little thin dime. Why, if you used half dollars or even quarters, the end product would be uh, clumsy, large, and bulky. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Besides, who ever heard of a $5 silver piece? <laughs> Why, a couple of those would weigh you down like a pack. <laughs> oh, you're sure right there. No, you, you couldn't have them any bigger than a dollar. Why, anybody can see that. Now, anything else you don't understand? Oh, no. Uh, how about you, fellows? No, it's real clear to me. Uh, me, too, but... Uh, but, uh, but what? I would like to see that thing work again. So would I. All right. But this time, you turn the crank, Mr. Uh, Gatsby. Four times? Yes, but not till I tell you to. You ready? Yep. All right, I'll put in the dime. One, two, three. Now. What? Now, turn it, turn oh, it. Oh. That's right. Now, three drops of quicksilver. There. And I turn the crank once more. Right. <laughs> well, you boys catch on fast. Is it ready now? It should be. Pull the lever. 
Happy <laughs> doggone, I did it. Well, that sure <laughs> is surprising. It sure is. It sure is. Can I try it? Now, I haven't had a turn. Can I try the whole thing? Well, I'd like to accommodate you, but I think I'd better cover it up and put it away before some untrustworthy person finds out what we're doing in here. Well, wh why don't you come have a drink with us, why, Professor? Yeah, we'd be proud to have you at our table. Well, that's very kind of you, gentlemen, but I do have a few little things I must do. If I finish in time, I may join you at the Long Ranch. Well, whatever you say. Anyway, a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. And the pleasure was all mine. Hi, this is Dennis James. Say, remember way back when this melody was popular? There's something very special about a long-time favorite, isn't there? Well, folks feel the same way about one of Kellogg's favorites, Kellogg's All Brand. Going on 41 years now, it's been America's most popular good food way to fight irregularity from lack of bulk. Because it's whole brand, Kellogg's All Brand gentles away irregularity safely and reliably. And because it's deep toasted for extra crispness, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Brand, Kellogg's All Brand. That's A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. I just can't get over it. Neither can I. You know, if a fella could just own one of them machines, or, or maybe even rent it for just a month, well, think all the good you could do. Yeah. You could build churches and help the poor people. It sure would be wonderful. And after you did all those things, you, you could even take a little for yourself. Well, there's no reason not to. Uh -huh. If a fella didn't get greedy, that is. That's right. You, know. you suppose he would sell it? Oh, I doubt that. I couldn't do nothing about it even if he would. <laughs> you don't suppose he'd uh, consider $1,500? 15,000 be more like you. Yeah. Anyway, I don't think so. Oh, gentlemen, I can't tell you how glad I am that you're still here. What's the matter? Something's come up. May I sit down, please? Oh, of course. Go right ahead. Yeah. Uh, what's come up? I just got word that they know where I am. The Silver Syndicate? The Silver Syndicate. And their killers are closing in. How many are they? I don't know. Could be just one. Could be all of them. Oh, I sure do wish Mr. Dillon was here. But he isn't. So I've had to come to a decision. I'm taking the train east early tomorrow, 8 o'clock. But I need your help, all of you. What do you want us to do? I want you gentlemen to destroy the silver extender. Destroy it? You, you mean bust? Oh, I mean, mean blow that. it to bits. So there isn't the slightest chance of anyone piecing it together and figuring out how it was made. That would be a terrible thing. Well, it sure oh, was. Just a minute, gentlemen. I understand your concern, but uh, it's not quite as bad as it sounds. How's that? Well, if I get to Washington alive, I can build another. Mm. If I don't, not only will I be dead, but my discovery will be lost to the government. I begin to see what you mean. Oh, oh, yeah. If you can make up another, and when you get there, oh, you'd be an awful lot safer traveling without this one. Then I can count on your help. Oh, sure. In what way? Well, I've told you I want to destroy the machine. But when you're dealing with Washington, you can't do things just like that. No, sir. Now, see if you can understand my problem. Now, let's say you're the government. You know I have this machine. I've told you I'm bringing it to you. Then I show up without it. You ask me where it is, and I say I blew it up. And you say to me, prove it. Prove you didn't sell it to somebody. But I can't prove it. So you convict me of treason, put me up against a wall, facing a firing That's squad. Terrible. That's the end of Professor Cranston. Oh, man, that'd be awful. Why, it sure would, but well, what can we do? You can be witnesses. Witnesses? If three honest citizens signed an affidavit that they saw the machine blown up, they'd have to believe me. Would you be willing to do that? I'm certainly not asking very much. No, I don't know, especially since you were so nice about sharing your secret. Well, I, I was planning to pull out early tomorrow, but there ain't no reason I can't wait till we're finished with it. Oh, you can wait that. Now, there's one other thing. What's that? Well, I've got it all crated, and only the four of us know where it is, so I'm sure it'll be safe there till morning. Now, 
Can I count on you? Of course you can. We'll do it just like you said. I don't know how to thank you, gentlemen. But when I tell the government what you've done for your country, you can be sure the U.S. Treasury will find some way of rewarding you for your services. (laughs) Well, I'll be at the Dodge House if any of you need me. This ought to be far enough in town. Just pull off the trail there and we'll unload it. All right, Chester. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Oh. Oh. You get that tailgate open, Wilbert, and I'll slide the crate back to you. Well, now, j- just a minute. Let me help you, fellas. That's far enough. You and me can lift it down, Chester. Oh, yeah. I got the dynamite all bundled in under the seat here. Yeah. Now, look, we can just prop up one end of this rock and slide the bundle and drive underneath. Here. Yeah. Oh, that should work just fine. Yeah. Ah, oh, fits real nice and snug, don't it? If you want to uncoil a roll of fuse, Wilbert, I'll, I'll turn wagon around and drive back down the trail. All right. I figured 20 feet of this would give us Plenty of time to get out of the way. Oh, sure. Uh, string it out. We'll light it and keep right on moving. That guess is far enough for a wagon? Yeah, yeah that's a good. Well, yeah. It's all of it, Chester. You ready to move? Any time. Here it goes, then. Come on. I'll come. <laughs> got plenty of time. Oh, you keep a good hold on them horses. There's a good five feet left before she blows. Smithereens. Yep, that did it. I think ain't nobody gonna get the professor's machine now. Oh, he sure won't. Well, all I have to do is get back on the Dodge and sign that paper. Get on up on the wagon, Wilbur. We'll get going. I'm coming. Let's go. I'll ride alongside you, fellas. We can stop by the office. Professor sure will be happy it all went so good. Yeah. I sure hated to do it, though. That machine... Oh, yeah. Somebody shooting it up. You see where that come from? Up there on that rise. I'm hit. You fool! You get Wilbur in the docks. I'll ride right after him. You'll never catch him. Well, I can try. You can get going. I'll meet you in town. Well, I'm not blaming you, Chester. The professor has taken in people a lot brighter than you are. Well, if he'd have tried to sell that machine, I would have got suspicious, but he didn't. I don't know a thing like this. People sell themselves. And you can be sure he got through to somebody. Or Gatsby and Durgan wouldn't be laying up in Doc's office with each other's bullets in them. Well, it all sure went over my head. Machines like that have been fooling people since the first day men stopped trading buckskins for flour and started using money. And as long as there's a man alive looking for something for nothing, it'll go right on working. I suppose. Matt. Yeah, Doc. If you want to talk to Durgham, you better do it now. All right. Come on, Chester. What about Gatsby? He never came out of it. Died a half an hour ago. Oh, my. Yeah, it sure doesn't make much sense, does it? Few killings do. Oh, that you, Marshal? Yeah, that's right. You're not laughing at me, are you? No, I'm not laughing. Something you want to tell me? Not much to tell. The stakes were big, but I, I lost. Just what were the stakes? Didn't Chester tell you? And he told me about the silver extender. He said you blew that up. That's what Chester was supposed to think. It's what I was supposed to think. But I knew better. That it wasn't in that crate? No, just scrap iron. Gatsby had the machine. What? Sure. After we left the Long Branch last night, Gatsby snuck back and made a deal with the professor. He bought that machine with my money. 
wouldn't go partners. Use the money I give him and wouldn't go partners. Why, Marshal, a hundred men could have got rich with that thing just using it an hour a day. He had to have it all. Couldn't share. Where is it now? If I tell you, will you promise to blow it up? Is that what you want? That's what I want. It's under the work counter in the back of my store. You know, a thing like that may be all right for the government, but it, it, it ain't for the people. The professor should have known that. Well, I think maybe he did. What do you mean? Nothing. Anything else you want me to know? That's about all, except about the gunman on the hill that hit Gatsby. What about him? I didn't hire him. Gatsby did. To shoot me. He just picked a man with a bad aim. So Gatsby got it in the shoulder. I, I think that's kind of funny. Gatsby tell you this? He did. When? As soon as Chester rode off after the gunman. Pulled his own gun to do the job himself. Then you shot him self-defense. You might say that, yeah, but... I'll be honest with you, though, Marshal. Yeah. I was planning to kill Gatsby anyway. You, you won't forget your promise. No, I am. Uh, I'll blow up the machine. You want me to send Doc back in? No reason to. Yeah. So long, Marshal. So long, Durham. About the silver extender? Mm -hmm. No, Chester, I didn't have the heart. I don't think I would either. No. Even when he's wrong, if a man has to die, likes to feel he's died for something. And if he dies for nothing, I don't want to be the one to let him know. Get the well, really light really refreshment. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I talk, hey? Get the really light refreshment. That's Pepsi Cola, of course. I just wanted to say be sociable, Charlie. Of course, Kay. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi on the road or at home. It always refreshes without filling. Charlie. Pick up extra cartons now. Pepsi is so delicious it goes fast. That's why you should keep Pepsi plenty of Pepsi on hand. Oops. Maybe I'd better sing. Be sure to say, keep Pepsi handy. Yes, Charlie. But the song says it sociably. Be sociable. Look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and stay in the air. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. What K means is, get plenty of Pepsi next time you shop. Well, yes. Gunsmoke Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Vic Perrin With editorial supervision by John Meston Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, and Jack Moyles Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke. This is WBT Radio in Charlotte, North Carolina.